Hello and welcome to Unit 1. Today we're embarking on a fascinating journey together, a journey through the evolution of the internet. We'll go from the early days of the read-only web all the way to the brink of the new era of read-write-own. Let's start our journey with Web 1, or as you'll see it referred to in the graphic, the read web. These were the very early days of the internet. We can imagine the internet like a giant library, a place where information is stored and you could go to read it, but you couldn't contribute your own ideas to it. In this era, the flow of information was in one direction, as most users were merely consumers of information because the barrier to contributing to the web was rather high. But just as our classrooms have evolved, so did the internet. Enter Web 2. If you consider the platforms that have gained popularity during the Web 2 era, you may already be getting a sense of the differences between Web 1 and Web 2. Web 2 is marked by the shift from our limited read ability in Web 1 to the ability to read write. This shift allowed the internet to become more like a student-centered classroom. It has become more interactive, dynamic, and many more people were now able to contribute. That's what Web 2 was like for the internet. Users could now create their own content, collaborate, and interact with each other across the world and across a variety of mediums such as writing, audio, and video. We are now standing on the brink of a new era, Web 3. This new era aims to decentralize the internet, making it more like a collaborative community. If Web 2 was marked by the ability to read and write, Web 3 is characterized by the ability to read, write, and now own. The vision of Web 3 is one where users can consume, contribute, and own their contributions to the web, shifting control from large platforms back to the user. To continue with our classroom analogy, Web 3 is like a classroom where students don't just learn and create, but also participate in making the rules, setting their own goals, and assessing their own progress. Web 3 is an exciting frontier, but just like any other major shift in our classrooms, it comes with its own set of challenges. But as educators, we're no strangers to learning and adapting, and that's what we're here to do. We'll learn about this evolution of the internet together, exploring what it means for us as educators and how we can navigate this new landscape. I'm excited to embark on this journey with you, so when you're ready, you can head to your first reading where we'll explore the evolution from Web 1 to Web 3 together. Oh.